what does it mean when a function is approaching a value? All right. So take a look at this graph down here for a minute. This is just a linear function, a graph of a linear function. Um, this is some random point on the x-axis, okay? C, it could be 3, it could be 5, it could be negative 2, and so on. So now, imagine you are to the left of C, right here, okay? Where is the graph? Is it above you or below you? It's above you, okay? Now, if you get closer to C, what is the graph doing as you get closer to C? It's, is it going down or up? Down. down. And if you get even closer to C, it's still going down. And as you get close to C, you see that the graph is going down and it's approaching a certain y value, correct? Okay. Now, what if you're to the right of C over here? Where is the graph now? Above you. Now, as you approach C from this side, what is the graph doing? Going up or down? Going up. And as you get closer and closer to C, you see that the graph is going up and approaching a y value, correct? Now, from the left and from the right, do you see how this graph is approaching the same y value? Okay, that's what we care about. Do we? Did I ever ask you what y value it ends up on when we get to C? Never asked you that. Because for what we're gonna do right now, we don't care about that. We just care about what y value is it approaching from both sides. When we see that from the left and the right, it's approaching the same y value, we say that this function has a limit at that point. So this is a new word, it's called, it's a limit. Basically, it comes when we look at the function and we say it must approach a y value from the left and the right sides, okay? So that's a limit. So I say, you know, the limit is blah, blah, blah. So now how do we write it? Suppose the number, like the y value it was approaching is this number L. Okay, L could be 5, 7, 3, whatever. We say the limit of f of x as x approaches c is L. If I was walking down the street and I saw this written on a billboard, the thing that I've highlighted, that I've highlighted, I say, oh, there's a function, and as you approach c from both sides, the y values are approaching the same number L from both sides. That's what that tells me. Okay? Did I ever ask if it got to that y value? No. Do I care when I'm finding a limit? No. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and find the limits here. The first one is we've given a graph here. The first one is the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 4. Right, so where is negative 4? Right here. Uh, okay, that's negative 4. So as I'm approaching negative 4 from the right, from the left hand side, what y value is the graph approaching? 3. As I'm approaching negative 4 from the right hand side, what y value is the graph approaching? 3. Because those numbers are the same from the left and the right, I say the limit as x approaches 4 or negative 4 is 3. Okay, hang on. Let me do another one and then I'll take questions. Okay, because I don't want the what if, what ifs yet, okay? Let's take a look at x equals 1. x equals 1 is here. Okay? <clears throat> as I approach 1 from the left-hand side, what y value is the graph approaching? Negative 1. What about from the other side? Negative 1. They're the same, so I say negative 1. Okay? 
Okay, I'm gonna do the next one, then I'm gonna take questions. Okay, now we gotta go to five. Okay, as I approach five from the left-hand side, what y value is the graph approaching from the left-hand side? Five. Five. Okay, what about from the right-hand side? Two. Two. Are those the same number? No. no. So I say, okay, I've never watched Mean Girls, but it's a line from there. What is it? The limit does not exist, but we write it as DNE. So the limit does not exist, okay? Because the left and right numbers were not the same. Next, now it's too cluttered here. Let's go to zero. Okay, as I approach zero from the left, what y value is the graph approaching? Zero. How about from the right? Zero. So this is zero. zero. Okay, now I'll take a couple of questions. Yes. So you have to have a Just for fun, let's now find what is f of negative 4, like you did yesterday. What's f of negative 4? Three. 3. At negative 4, the y value is 3. Okay. f of negative 1 f of negative 1 you're sure i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry it's f of 1 sorry sorry f of 1 you're sure it's undefined because there is an open circle here right it's undefined there is no y value there okay what about f of 5 Well, let's see. Let's go to 5. Is there a y value? It's 2. When you have open or closed on the same line, it's the closed one, 2. They both can't, if they were both closed, would it pass the vertical line test? No. So it won't be a function to begin with. And then f of 0 is 0. Okay, the reason why I did this is to show you, look, is to highlight how the limit and the value have nothing to do with each other. We have cases where the limit and the value are the same. We have cases where we have a limit, but the y value is undefined. You have cases where the limit does not exist, but you have a cute little y value. So just to show you, the limits and the y values have nothing to do with each other. This is important. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now, before we talk about what continuity is, we want to talk about what a discontinuity is. There are three types of discontinuities that we're going to talk about. A discontinuity is basically when you're drawing a graph, right? If you have to take, up, take your pen off of the paper, right, to draw a graph, that means there is a discontinuity. Okay, there are three types of discontinuity. One is an infinite discontinuity. Basically, this is a vertical asymptote. All right, there is an infinite discontinuity. Next is a jump discontinuity, how you see like the y value is one thing on one graph and another it jumps from one to the other this will come from piecewise functions okay and then there is a removable discontinuity which um you know it's basically a hole in the graph those are the three types of discontinuities last semester i mean last year in algebra 2 you actually did you know when you were doing the rational functions you figured out how to get an infinite or a removable discontinuity. We're going to come back to that. Okay, so let's talk about the continuity test. Can you sit up for me? Thank you. And like face forward. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about the continuity test. There is a three, three conditions, right? Here's what I found. Oh, no, that's not what it is. Okay, so the first condition is f of c exists. So, for example, here, if I label these 1, 2, 3, 4, 
For which one of these does f of c exist? So look, number one, f of negative four is three, so it exists, right? What else? You, okay, so, so number one, right? Number three and number four, right? No, no, I'm just saying, let's identify the ones for which f of c, f of that value exists, and that's number one, three, and four, okay? No, it can be, no, no, like the f here, like f of negative four is three, it exists, okay? f of one is undefined, it doesn't exist. That's what I mean. But all three of these have, the y values exist, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is number one, three, and four. Okay, the next condition is the limit exists. So if you go up here, for which one of these does the limit exist? One and one, two, and four, right? The limit exists for one, two, and four. Okay, the next condition is the limit has to equal f of c. So here, the limit is 3. f of c is 3. That's the next condition. So that happens at number 1 and number 4. Okay? Number 1 and 4. When all three of those conditions are met, like number one and number four, we say that the function is continuous at those points. So here, because those are the same and these are the same, we say that the function is continuous at negative four and x is zero. So that's sort of the, the idea. Okay. Huh? Um... I'm not sure what the question is. I said that the limit exists for two. I didn't say it was continuous. I said it was continuous for one and four. Okay, so let's do one. Okay, let's do a test and see. So let's determine whether the function is continuous at the given x values, right? Okay, here is your function, and you want to see if it's continuous at x equals one. The first thing is, is it, okay, what's f of 1? You plug it in there, and you get 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. f of 1 equals 3, you get a, you know, a, a, a real number for the y value, so that checks, okay? So now we can move on to the next step. Graph on the calculator and see if, the limits are the same. So I'm going to do that right now. Let's graph it very quickly. And it's not going to be very complicated when you, when you do that, right? Um, don't like, don't overanalyze it too much. Um, so let's put that one in there. X squared plus X plus one. Okay. All right, so we have x squared plus, was it 2x? No, no 1x. And we're looking, okay, so that's the graph. And we're looking at it at x equals 1. So do you guys know how to get tables from, did you guys learn last year about tables? Okay, let's just visually do it from here. So later. Okay, so let's go to x equals 1. That's right here. Like, you can just visually inspect it. x equals 1 is here. Is the graph approaching the same y value from the left and the right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What value does it look like it's approaching? 3. Okay, so you say the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 equals 3. Okay, yeah. Sure. Now the next part is, 
is your answer from one and two the same? Then, so therefore, f of x is continuous at x equals one. It might be discontinuous somewhere else in its life, but we don't care about that. We just care about that point. Okay, only one question and then I'm gonna move on. Therefore, okay. So let's take a look at this one. I want to see if this is, I want to see if this is continuous at x equals 2. Okay? So, I just said f of x is continuous at x equals 1. Okay. So, um, the first step is, f of 2, right? Plug it in. Let's see if it exists. We're going to get 2 plus 1 over 2 minus 2. 3 over 0, that's undefined. So it already failed. Okay? It already failed. Once it fails one step, then it's done. It's an all or nothing deal. But now, so we know that it's not continuous. at x equals 2. But now we need to figure out what type of discontinuity it is. Right, so for here we're kind of going to channel algebra 2 a little bit, right? What is happening here in the uh, denominator? When the denominator equals 0, what does that mean? It's undefined, but what else? There is a vertical asymptote there. You guys remember that? Yes, no? Okay, so when you take the denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve for it, you get x equals 2. Now, does that term in the denominator, x minus 2, cancel with anything in the numerator? Does x minus 2 cancel with anything in the numerator? No. If it does not cancel... That means it's infinitely there, right? It doesn't go away. So it's an infinite discontinuity. Okay, so this is an infinite discontinuity. Now, you can also look on your graph it and look over there. So this is Give me one second. I'll, I'll talk over everything. I'll talk about everything, right? So x plus 1 over x minus 2. Okay. Do you see how there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 2? So that is an infinite discontinuity. All right? Okay. So let's take a look at this one. Plug in negative 3, and you get 9 minus 9 over 0, which, um, it, okay, you get 0 over 0 for this. You don't get a number. Um, so this is not, this not continuous at x equals negative 3. So now we have to figure out what type of discontinuity this is. Okay. So 0 over 0 is not 0, and it's not defined either. Later on in the year, we're going to talk about what that is. We call that indeterminate form because it can be a variety of things. Just know that 0 over 0, when you get 0 over 0, you're not getting like a finite number. So here, let's graph this one and see what happens here. Okay, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Okay, x squared and then tab plus 3, okay? So take a look at what I get here. I get a line. You don't even see any discontinuities here, okay? So let's see what's going on here. Let's take f of x, and whenever you have anything in front of you, 
a good, like a sophisticated math student will always factor everything that they can factor. Now, we have, a, we have an issue because at, we have a term in the denominator. And at x equals negative 3, that denominator equals 0. It's never a good thing when the denominator equals 0. But take a look at what happens here, which is different from the problem we just solved. These cancel out. So I'm left with x minus 3. Do you see how the problem just totally went away? Do you see how I removed the problem? That's how this is a removable discontinuity. You see that? So this is a removable discontinuity. So let's take a look here. Let's trace. Let's go to menu 5, graph trace. Okay, at 0, y is negative 3, totally fine. We're moving up here. Oh, no, we got to go to negative 3. Um, I want, okay, negative 3. For what? Look, at negative 2.4, all is good. Negative 2.7, all is good. I go to negative 3, and it's undefined. There is a hole there that you can't see on the graph, but it's there. So to answer the question of, do I have my calculator available? On the quiz, you'll have your calculator available, but do you see how it's no good to you if you still don't know what you're doing, right? So we got to be math woke, right? You just have to know what's going on, okay? All right, yeah. This is not an asymptote. This is a removable discontinuity or a hole in the graph. It was an asymptote before. Okay, yep. So if we have, um, there's an x plus 3 cancels out on there. How do you find the x? Yeah. X plus three, huh? Like x, it's not x. So you, you do what you cancel out, or what? But. No, what cancels out? Anything in the denominator can give you a discontinuity. If it cancels out, it's removable. If it stays, it's infinite. You define where it is. You define zero. Yep. So. Okay. End behavior. You guys did end behavior last year. Um, we're just gonna remember. We're just gonna remind ourselves how to do it. End behavior is basically what value the graph is approaching at the far ends of the infinities. We are always like focused in here, negative 10 to positive 10 and whatever. But you know what? Life doesn't end there. It's the infinities. So take a look at this graph. As x approaches positive infinity, what's y doing? Negative. Going down to negative infinity, right? So the proper way to write that you know, in Algebra 2, we do as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. No one likes that notation. The good notation, the proper notation is this, okay? This, you know, like, again, this is one of those, like, Drake memes. Have you seen those Drake memes where, you know, he's just like, nah, and then he's like, okay, that's cool. Have you seen those? No? All right, all right, one day. So it's like, that's no good, but this one, that's the one we're talking about. So the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity is negative infinity. So we say it equals negative infinity, okay? Now, the next one, it says limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, what's y doing? Positive infinity. Okay? Cool math people also call this left end behavior and right end behavior. Okay? All right, so let's talk about behavior here. Look at this one. What we need to do is limit of f of x. Whenever I say describe end behavior, you have to write these two things, negative infinity, limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity, and then fill in the answers. So, as x approaches negative infinity, what's y doing? One thing is, you know, take your pen or pencil and trace it. What y value is the graph approaching? Nope. Zero. zero. It's leveling off at zero, right? 
you see how it's like it clearly is leveling up at zero. So as I go to the far end, y is approaching zero. How about on the opposite side? No. Same thing, zero again. It's going to level off and zero. It looks like it's gradually going down, but it'll level off, right? Like you'll know when it's going up and down. Like look at this next one. Wait, sorry, huh? Okay, so take your pen or pencil, okay? And now you want to know what's happening to the graph as you go to negative infinity. What y value is the graph approaching? Zero. And here too, it's approaching zero. What about here? As you go to negative infinity, what y value is the graph approaching? Negative infinity. What about here? No, positive infinity. So negative infinity here, positive infinity there. Yeah. That you don't care because this, where does this live? Does this live at the infinities? No, this is at like x equals negative 1 and positive 1, right? So you don't care about that. You literally, you're talking about what happens as you go to like x equals infinity, x equals a trillion, x equals negative a trillion at the far ends, okay? Huh? Wait, this one? No, that's what that's what she was just asking. This is where is what, what are the x values for this? Like negative two to two. We don't care about that. We care about x is negative a trillion or positive a trillion. Okay, let's do this one. Um, so let's graph this one. Yeah. See, you see how it says use your graphing calculator. Yeah, okay, so let's graph this one. Um, X cubed, where are your notes? Okay. Um, minus X squared minus 4X plus 4. Okay. Um, all right, so discontinuity. What type of function is this? It's a polynomial function, right? What did we say about domain yesterday for polynomial functions? All real numbers. So there are no discontinuities. Because the domain is all reals, there are no discontinuities. Okay, right end behavior. As you go to positive infinity, where does the y go? Positive infinity. As you go to negative infinity, where does the y go? Negative infinity. Okay, zeros, you all know how to find zeros from last year, right? Analyze graph, zero. I'm just going to put one of them is negative two zero. Well, actually, it's negative two zero, one zero, two zero. Or you could say x equals negative 2, neg uh, positive 1, or 2. Okay? Okay, you know what? I'm actually going to go to that one. I lost some time with the technical difficulties. I'm going to go to number 4. Okay? Um, example 4. So... It says on the next page, it says determine the value of A so that F is continuous. Okay? Um, okay, so to be continuous, left and right should have the same Y value. Okay? Okay. I'm going to explain, Jack. Hang on. Okay, so look. This is a piecewise function. Do you see how this is the region x is less than 2? So this is the region to the left of 2. This is the graph to the right of 2. Okay? 
So what you do is, on the left, okay, f of 2, you plug it in. You get 5. On the right, f of 2 is, you plug it in, right? Now you set these two equal to each other. And that's your answer. Okay? Huh? So you take this value, you take this value too, Plug it in there, plug it in there, set them equal to each other, and that's it. Okay? All right. So I wanted to pass back your tests today, but I left them downstairs. I forgot them downstairs. Um, but if you, um, if you really want them, you can come, like, at the beginning of lunch, because I won't be there later. Um, so now. Yeah, come now.